Miraculous Ladybug is the most overhyped show in the history of French cartoons. Now don't get me anything started. I liked French cartoons since I watched them as a kid. I can remember Spyro and Fantasio, The Adventures of Tintin, Ogie and the Cockroaches, aka the French version of Tom and Jerry, Monster Buster Club, which, I even watched modern French cartoons that are good, such as, Zig and Sharko, Angelo Rules, Wakfu, or any kind of good French cartoons that I've recently, good times, don't you guys think? Miraculous Ladybug follows the escapades of two superheroes in Paris as they fight villains that get led by a guy who wants to bring the heroes down. You'd think this would make for a good show with intense action, lovable characters, and very rich world building. Unfortunately, you're thinking of the adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. This show's premise falls apart immediately when you add in the details. This is actually about a stupid girl named Mayrona who has a crush on a dream boy named Adrian. She also dons her superhero identity Ladybug to fight alongside Cat Noir, who is actually Adrian. Together they fight petty villains that are corrupted by Akuma Butterflies, sent by the show's main baddie, Hawkmoth. If you're starting to think wait a minute let me stop you right there because that whole premise is nothing but wait a minute. This is such a convoluted and ridiculous setup because in order for it to function, the characters have to be back flipping stupid. Mayronette can't know Cat Noir is Adrian because she's not smart enough to notice they have the same hairstyle and eye color. Adrian can't know Hawk Moth is actually his father, spoiler, but even a four year old could figure that out, because he's too delusional to think that his busy single dad is actually a villain. And Hawk Moth can't just fight Ladybug and Cat Noir himself because he's too lazy and egotistical to leave his lair. See the problem? Because the premise is so contrived, this makes each episode beyond formulaic. Mayronet fumbles to get Adrian to notice her. Some loser gets corrupted by an Akuma. Ladybug and Cat Noir fight said loser. Ladybug uncorrupts them. And the day is saved. Rinse. Lather. Freaking repeat. No one grows or changes from these experiences and by the end of the episode we're back to square one because the status quo is a cruel, unfair, and unfunny god. That's another thing. This show is painfully unfunny. Every joke falls flat, the gags are cringe, and the subversions can be seen from a light year away. I get this was trying to follow in the footsteps of Clis de Canime, a La Sailor Moon, but with writing like this, it instead trips over its tail left feet. The characters have clearly been taking stupid lessons from fish hooks. None of them are remotely smart or have any common sense, and the more they're on screen, the more aggravating the experience is. Starting with our leading nitwit, Mayronet is, for the umpteenth mother and father flipping time, a stupid, irresponsible girl that makes things worse. Once again I must ask why so many creators insist on making female characters like this as it does nothing but make a good case for how not to act. In the case of Mayronet, She's madly in love with Adrian to the point where she steals his phone to delete an embarrassing message, struggles to hand him a birthday gift, and has an entire spreadsheet of his day-to-day -day activities. That's not cute or funny, it's freaking creepy. Adrian isn't much better as he's just a one-dimensional dream boy who's oblivious to Mayronet's advances. When they're Ladybug and Cat Noir, Mayronet is more confident and Cat Noir frequently hits on her. This is barely an improvement as the characters frequently shank their personal responsibilities for their own personal gain. None of the supporting characters are much better as Alina acts more like Mayronet's conscience. Nino is Adrian's anti-authoritarian best friend. Tiki is Mayronet's little sprite with an annoying voice that forms into her costume, and likewise plague for Adrian. Then there's Chloe, the show's designated spoiled brat. Like every pampered brat before her, she's a mean. Nasty, bossy, selfish, and egotistical tramp hits on Adrian frequently. She's also the mayor's daughter, which is a bad reflection on not just him as a politician, but also as a father. The worst part about this show, though, are the villains. Every villain is just a petty, stupid, egotistical moron with weak gimmicks, lousy costumes, and no threatening bones in their bodies. The bubbler uses bubbles as a power. Stormy weather creates storms and ice, and nothing else, which makes her name rather misleading. Mr. Pigeon uses pigeons, and Copycat is just Cat Noir. 
but evil. All these villain are lead by the show's main villain, Hawk Moth, who just lazily stays in his lair expecting these loser villains to do his dirty work rather than try and take on Ladybug and Cat Noir himself. The voice acting is honestly very irritating. And yes I'm talking about the French dub because in English the characters have bad lip syncing, which frustrates me to no end. Anna Ook Hoboy sounded like she was always squealing and made Mayoronette sound very off-putting. Benjamin Bolland don't sound as enthusiastic as Adrian and it isn't much better as Cat Noir. Marie Nonnenmaker sounded very grating and unnatural last Tiki, with Thierry Caz's iron sounding too gravely and gruff as Plague. Aunt Wan Tom didn't sound as menacing as Hawk Moth as I would have liked, as he sounded more like tough guy speaking French. Fanny Block sounded rather dull as Alu, and her chemistry with Mayronet never felt believable. Marie Chivalot sounded very grating and more uptight as Chloe. They're all trying their best, I know, but they can't salvage such hopeless material. Visually, this show looks absolutely terrible, which is saying a lot considering 14 different companies collabed to bring this to life. No, that's not an exaggeration. Zagtoon, Method, Toei, S. A. S. Smeg Entertainment, SK Broadband, De Agostini Editor, Gloob, Gravity, DQ Entertainment, Assemblage Entertainment, Symbiosis Entertainment, Artage Studio, and in effect O Atlantis all contributed to making this show. The characters have distinct these genes that are inspired by classic anime, such as the characters having their hair be a specific color, big expressive eyes, and colorful costumes. Unfortunately, in actual animation the show looks wretched. The character animation is so stiff and restricted forbidding any attempts to emulate the cartoony expressions of classic anime. This is also true for the action scenes as the characters have no way to them and the cinematography is very shaky. The worst part about the visuals is how they depict Paris. Yeah, the building are well designed and have a nice color palette, but this city is almost completely empty. There's like over 30 characters walking about, which is beyond far from how Paris actually is. Even on a slow Tuesday. The Eiffel Tower gets like 25,000 visitors. You expect me to believe Paris is this devoid of citizens and tourists? Baloney. Even with good designs, the show still has stiff animation. This show is unfit to be called Miraculous. Miraculous Ladybug is a travesty of a cartoon that fails at every aspect. The writing is atrocious, the characters are morons, the voice acting is irritating, the animation is stiff and Paris looks like a ghost town. Worst of all, the villains absolutely blow chunks. Despite its popularity and cult following, this stands as one of the worst superhero shows I've ever seen. I'll also talk about their toxic fandom. The miraculous fandom has become incredibly racist, predatory, pedophilic, sexist, misogynistic and ableist. Fans have taken negative attitudes such as sexualizing the main characters, especially in their superhero costumes. There are accounts in social media where they publish funerts of Ladybug and Cat Noir, 14 year olds, in obscene poses. Likewise, there are teenagers and grown ups making sexual comments about them. The toxicity of the fandom does not stop there. Fans are also sexist, hating Adrian Agreste's female love interests but praising Mayoronet Dupin Cheng's male love interests. People were happy about Luca Kun's arrival to the program, and even didn't mind when Mayoronet started dating him. But when Adrian became Kagami's boyfriend, everyone hated her and made death threats. The amount of toxic attitudes that exist within this fandom are huge, and it needs to be mentioned. Miraculous, Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir has declined quite a bit in quality. Being a series whose creator promotes hatred and denies freedom of speech, you can't expect much. All in all, it is unfortunate that this very popular series, I no longer watch the show. If this is not your case, that's fine. This discussion is not meant to criticize those who watch it, but to encourage them to analyze what they consume. At the end of the day, being open-minded is essential. So in conclusion, Miraculous, Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir was one of the worst superhero shows ever existed. That show made me disappointed of how this show was the one that caused the downfall of Disney Channel. I thought that this show would be Nickelodeon's cash grab, 
But this show now became Disney Channel's cash-grabbing machine. Because Miraculous, Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir has been airing for a long time on Disney Channel. And what is the result of that? Mickey Mouse from 2013, cancelled. Wander Over Yonder, cancelled. Milo Murphy's Law, cancelled. Rapunzel's Tangled Adventure, cancelled. DuckTales from 2017, cancelled. Big Hero 6 The Series, cancelled. Amphibia, cancelled. The Owl House, cancelled. The Wonderful World of Mickey Mouse, cancelled. The Ghost and Molly McGee, cancelled. Haley's on it, cancelled. Miraculous, Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir, more episodes. What in the fuck? Because of that shit, I stopped watching Disney Channel nowadays, proving that Miraculous became Disney Channel's cash grabbing machine. Marionette is the Mary Sue in this show. Miraculous Ladybug is keeps on milking the show all over again. It's also like Star vs. The Forces of Evil, which was fallen apart and turned into a romantic drama. Because of only focusing on Star Butterfly and Marco Diaz. Over a stupid Starco. Starco now became my guilty pleasure. I mean seriously? What in the name of Mickey Mouse is going, airing Miraculous all over again? This is ridiculous. Disney Channel was like a masterpiece that made a lot of great shows, such as, The Replacements, American Dragon, Jake Long, Recess, Kim Possible, Lilo and Stitch, House of Mouse, Phineas and Ferb, Kick Butowski and etc. Even great live-action shows like The Sweet Like of Zack and Cody, Jonas, The Wizards of Waverly Place, Zeke and Luther, Aaron Stone, K.C. Undercover, and others. And now it's nothing but filling up Disney Channel with stupid miraculous shit. This is why I stopped watching Disney Channel nowadays, and this is why I should move to Disney XD since I want to watch good Disney shows. Or watch Disney Plus. I mean why would Disney has acquired media in and the Zag franchise? I almost feel embarrassed, but hey, there are good modern Disney Channel shows, Big City Greens, Monsters at Work, The Proud Family, Louder and Prouder, Chibi Verse, Hamster and Gretel, Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur, and Kith. And I don't want to hear about Primas. Let's hope that Stu Go, Cookies and Milk, North Woods, and the revivals of Phineas and Ferb, Darkwing Duck, and even Tailspin will be Linda worth it. But Miraculous, Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir, this show really needs to stop.